Okay. So, um, very thanks to, for the CAT 2022 International Conference uh, for providing an opportunity. My title of the talk is uh, Understanding the Doping Mechanism in uh, Most Complex uh, Tridoped uh, Titania. The unique feature that you can observe uh, in this system is all carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur uh, are non metal in nature. Okay, so before exactly understanding the co doping process, uh, we will define what, what, what do you mean by doping process? It is an entry of impurity or a foreign ions, either it may be a cation or the anion, uh, in the co any host lattice when you consider the semiconductors lattice. Okay, so if a dopant should not have any basic requirement, is dopant should not have any chemical interactions. If it has a chemical interactions, then the host matrix loses its structural identity. Then we call it as a composite. So we must understand that there is a certain concentration of a dopant level to enter into the uh, host matrix. The, the wide range of uh, doping uh, types of doping that we observe is uh, in the experiments, substitution, and the interstitial. In between, uh, we do also observe a segregation near the grain boundary region uh, when you consider the polycrystalline matrix. Within the substitution, if the ions or the dopant enters uh, into the bulk of the lattice, those significantly induces lattice disorders or we call it as lattice distortion. If it is a surface dopant, that means if the dopant uh, penetration ability is very less, then it enters into the surface, it uh, results in surface doping. It may not have, uh, it will be always having less impact on the host matrix, less impact in the sense. I am referring to structural and optical properties. Whenever uh, segregation near the boundary, uh, grain boundary region appears, then a composite structure is formed. As I just mentioned in this uh, particular slide, a dopant uh, interacts with the oxygen of the host lattice, forming its own oxides. For example, zinc, if it is substituting titanium dioxide, then you get an impurity of a zinc oxide, likewise. The interstitial uh, happens with an extremely small size ions like uh, lithium plus ions, or even sometimes with the observed with the larger size ions. When uh, they doesn't, uh, when the thermodynamic uh, constraints exist for the substitution process, then we end with interstitial. Interstitial will ha never have any impact on the pristine matrix. Interstitial sites, or we can call it as a voids. So the, what is the criteria if, uh, for the effective doping process is the ionic radius, either cation or the anion, must be comparable to the host ions so that the faster diffusion can be uh, facilitated and crystalline structure of the host material uh, must be largely in amorphous state so that you have a very different edge. If you dope any uh, dopants in the crystalline matrix, then more heat energy is required to break the bonds. But when the uh, host matrix is amorphous in nature, you will be having too much of dangling bonds. The dopant process can be easily. So the effective doping process also depends on annealing the ambience of the environment, whether you are annealing the sample in the air, oxygen, nitrogen, or any inert atmosphere, uh, or temperature and time, it must be always moderate, depending on the host matrix, so that you don't observe any uh, impure phases. For example, if, if you assume that you are doping zinc in titanium dioxide, a little, as per the literature, you can observe only 400 to 500 degrees Celsius. Beyond that, you observe the formation of zinc titanates. Okay, so the, we must ensure that the ionic radius of the dopant as well as the uh, annealing conditions are appropriate enough uh, to result in the doper matrix, not the composite uh, surface. So widely, if you have a monodoping where if only one cation or one element if you are do doping or by doping two metals or two non-metals or tri doping system, this is the area of my interest now. Uh, either you can substitute at the cationic sites or the anionic sites. Also, you have a lower valent, isovalent, and hypervalent. That means isovalent you consider when the charges of are same. For example, dope V4 plus in Ti4 plus sites, oxidation numbers are same. So it is isovalent doping. Doping Zn2 plus at Ti4 plus sites, lower valent. Charge on Zn is 2 plus. Titanium is 4 plus, lower valent. Hypervalent, higher uh, uh, oxidation states, greater than 4 plus. That is molybdenum, 6 plus. If you're doping molybdenum 6 plus in at Ti4 plus sites, then we call it as hypervalent doping. Uh, rare instance, we observe the neutral atom doping, just like with the gold. Uh, very rarely we observe this uh, particular nature. What exactly ha happens upon the doping is uh, the defects, depending on the uh, charge uh, difference of the host and guest and the ionic radius, you observe either the structural disorder or the oxygen vacancies. 
Next, uh, because uh, the uh, defects can also serve as a charge carrier uh, traps, uh, there will be some alternative, alternative pathways for the generation separation and the recombination pathways. Optical properties, the dopant states, if it is in between the band gap edges, then you get narrow gap, narrowing of the band gap is observed. If it is above the convection band edge or the below the valence band edge, then suddenly you will observe a widening of the band gap. So basically you observe a structural and uh, optical properties, an enormous change during the doping process. Either it can be a monodoping or the co-doping process. So having uh, given, given, given a broader uh, prospect of the doping, are we, lit, uh, are we exhausted in this, uh, uh, in this area of research? Of course, quantitatively, because as far as uh, if I consider, if you consider titanium dioxide, you will observe the same concepts, uh, just marrying the uh, preparation methods of the different dopants, okay? Uh, take any metal ions, you observe salgyl doped titanium dioxide or hydrothermal, uh, salvothermal com solution combustion method. Same uh, aspects will be detailed. Uh, existence of optimum dopant con concentration or reduction of crystallite size, same thing, it will be observed. So quantitatively, it is exhausted. You will observe more than uh, at least 20,000 papers on the uh, doped titania. But qualitatively, no. We, we so far, uh, we, our understanding on uh, the nature of the host matrix and the dopant are very less. And even if it, when it comes to the co-doped effects, no, we do not consider dopant-dopant interaction itself. So the literature on the co-doped titania is not even uh, reach a threshold level. You still have a more room uh, on this area of research. So that is what I meant in this slide. Quantitatively, it is exhausted, but not qualitatively. Uh, so the code of titania, as I said, uh, either you can uh, substitute two different metal cations at the TI4 plus sites, you call it as code of or two different uh, non-metal ions at the oxygen lattice sites, uh, or one can be substitutional, other can be interstitial, or both are also can be interstitial, uh, just, just like we observe with the boron nitrogen code of states. These are the four different states of the cold of titania. Yeah. Meeting all these, uh, we are, we are come, come to the CNS 5 dope titania. So the, why, what is the basic the basis for choosing the carbon nitrogen sulfur is uh, the computational calculation as, as well as the experimental results suggest that doping carbon nitrogen sulfur are uh, very low formation energies. So that is a facile doping process. You do not have any impurity doping. You, you just like in zinc, you, you observe zinc titanates. But likewise, you don't have any observation of impure phase. So the phase purity can be maintained. And more important, if you're doping into anatase TiO2, which is widely regarded as a photocatalyst, it will never facilitate any neutral phase transformation. And the band gap narrowing is inevitably absurd. Uh, because in few metal dopants, band gap widening is absurd. So the, uh, considering all these advantages, trying to put constructing carbon nitrogen sulfur has gained enormous uh, interest. Uh, in this case, we have excluded uh, fluorine because fluorine, <coughs> it widens the band gap as its uh, energy level is below the oxygen 2p levels. As a result, you observe the uh, blue shift. Uh, this is the article that we have published uh, in the Inorganic Chemistry Frontiers on uh, this particular system. So what are the basic uh, precursors that is used widely? Uh, it is thiourea, cysteine, and cysteine. Uh, make sure that we are uh, cysteine. You know, E I N E I N E. This spelling uh, results in a very large difference uh, in the molecular structure. In the thiourea, you have a carbon and sulfur uh, uh, doubly bonded. In the nitrogen, carbon is uh, bonded to nitrogen, and the other hand, it is bonded to sulfur. But in this case, sulfur-sulfur bond you observe in the cysteine. Because of the difference in the molecular structure, it also affects in the tridoping doping modes of the carbon, nitrogen, sulfur. Overall, uh, as in the literature. Okay, uh, before coming to the literature, just try to have a glance on the ionic radius. Uh, please understand that sulfur can exist, exhibit in a three different oxidation state, S2 minus, S4 plus, and S6 plus. Carbon in a two anionic and cationic form, and nitrogen exhibits only in the anionic form. So the first report came from the Wuhan University of Science and Technology in 2008. That is the only report that has uh, that uh, furnishes information on the simultaneous doping of carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur in the anionic states. Rest of that, it is a combination. Either you observe uh, uh, the cationic states of carbon and sulfur uh, and uh, nitrogen in the uh, anionic states. You can observe here, nitrogen occupies both 
interstitial sites and anionic form. This we call it as dual doping mode. That means and, uh, same element occupies different states. Okay, even uh, sulfur. Sulfur can be either the cationic or the anionic. Okay, you, you, there are such instances where carbon is not at all doped because of the segregation of the surface itself, depending on the preparation conditions. Of the 38 reports that you come across from 2008 to 2022, these are the uh, widely reported doping modes here. What the literature doesn't report is, for example, sulfur in the cationic sites, nitrogen in the anionic sites, and interstitial carbon. Likewise, there are plenty of doping modes are possible that we have not observed so far. We can open up a research investigation in future to achieve these doping modes so that a spectacular electronic properties can be expected. Okay, why we observe carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur occupying the oxygen lattice sites? Okay, just because uh, nitrogen, see, KO2 is an n-type semiconductor, basically as in uh, oxygen vacancies. So these oxygen vacancies preliminarily serves as a site for sulfur substitution. Okay, so sulfur can substitute these oxygen sites. Carbon and uh, nitrogen, because of lower charge compared to oxygen, it induces oxygen vacancies for charge compensation, according to Kroger and the Wink notation. So as it is said, uh, there is a chance for sulfur substitution more compared to carbon and nitrogen. So the here you can see that TiO, Ti bond is replaced in the other another lattice by Ti sulfur, Ti bond. That is, sulfur is substituted in the oxygen sites. Here, nitrogen sites and here at the carbon sites. So the simultaneous formation of oxygen vacancies okay, induces or facilitates all the dopants to occupy the oxygen sites. A rarest report that is uh, uh, achieved by the Solgel method. In fact, in the literature, this is the only report so far that is observed. The second, carbon and sulfur tends to prefer uh, occupy the cationic sites and nitrogen at the anionic sites. Okay. Why this is the issue means sulfur uh, exhibits in a sulfur six plus states. As a result, when you dope sulfur, oxygen vacancy decreases. Okay, and here carbon uh, in the cationic sites again carbon is isovalent. Okay, it will not change the oxygen vacancy structure because there is a decrease in the concentration of oxygen vacancies. Okay, nitrogen doping is very slowly observed. As a result, what happens? Nitrogen because you don't have sufficient sites for nitrogen to occupy, few of the nitrogen uh, enters into the interstitial sites. So this is a very good uh, observation by these uh, people. Okay, where nitrogen occupies both uh, substitution sites as well as the interstitial sites when sulfur occupies the titanium sites. Now remember that the change in the oxygen vacancy structure is responsible for these uh, doping modes. It was observed by hydrothermal, H3 means hydrothermal, and the salt gel method also. Okay, the uh, calcination temperature was different in all these reports. And next, nitrogen and sulfur in the anionic uh, sites and sulfur in the cationic sites. As I said, nitro the doping of nitrogen here uh, induces oxygen vacancies. As a result, sulfur prefers to occupy. Okay, the uh, cat car carbon, you can see that. TiO, Ti bond, a Ti is replaced by the carbon. Only one report, so only one report by Saljal uh, uh, method reported in 2013. So once the doping mode changes, you observe a series of changes. Likewise here, as I said, nitrogen anionic and interstitial because of the sulfur occupying the cationic sites. Okay, and this is a precursor where carbon was dispersed on the surface. You do not observe carbon on the substitution sites, or in the interstitial sites, carbon will be presented, uh, is reported to be present as carbonate species. Okay, by chance if they have increased the annealing temperature, carbon would have been expelled. But uh, depending on the preparation conditions, these things are simultaneously observed. Okay, so what is the exact problem with this thing is that is compared to other matrix, see, uh, sulfur uh, sublimates, that means it escapes from the lattice at the 673 Kelvin in the cadmium sulfide. Okay, that is purely covalent. The titanium dioxide, that is not the issue. It is a mere, it is a mixture of ionicity and covalency, amphoteric in nature. As a result, sulfur, even if it is doping in the TaO2 sites, it will be very stable. Okay, as I said, 
these uh, when s2 minus has larger ionic size when it dopes here understand that why i have written sulfur in the at the first uh, surface itself is sulfur has the larger ionic size as a result the penetration depth of the sulfur is very less so it prefers to occupy surface doping level only okay as a result okay so sulfur induces uh, oxygen uh, a huge lattice expansion that is what i have indicated okay so whenever you, you have a pre, uh, host or uh, by default you have an oxygen vacancies it sulfur can easily occupy here okay and when sulfur occupies the cationic sites s4 plus uh, it is a smaller ionic radius compared to ti4 plus as a result lattice of sinkage takes place there will be too much of uh, lattice contraction even carbon 4 plus a very small ionic radius so whenever you have the simultaneous doping of these three okay at one part of the lattice you will be having a lattice expansion and the other have you will be having a lattice contraction but somewhere the distortion normalizes after certain doped concentration this is the thing where we have to understand the degree of distortion what is at the surface as well as at the bulk such kind of studies are essential maybe the computational studies will be very useful in this matter theoretically the xr patterns may not show a degree of lattice expansion or the lattice contraction it shows a normalized effect but more uh, we can uh, explore on these things having said the uh, reports uh, just trying to uh, summarize carbon doping modes see if you take thio urea carbon occupies the anionic sites as well as the cationic sites if you take cysteine uh, the only you will find anionic doping cysteine only cationic doping So thiourea is a versatile precursor that facilitates carbon to substitute as uh, both at the cationic site and the anionic site. Okay, a very simple molecule. Okay, thiourea. When you go to the uh, system, the nitrogen doping modes, here you can observe. Okay, a varied uh, cysteine allows only two doping modes. That is OTI N states or TI O N states. But thiourea, if you see. a varied uh, nitrogen bonding states is observed uh, these data are uh, taken from the xps okay and even if you consider cysteine same thing you observe so we can how far we can account that nitrogen doping in distinct modes are possible you click you have to consider carbon nitrogen sulfur ratio see if you consider cysteine and cysteine carbon and nitrogen ratio is 3 is to 1 is to 1 okay but if in the thiourea One is to two is to one. That is, uh, slightly uh, nitrogen content is mm, richer in thiourea compared to carbon and sulfur. Here, carbon content is richer, not the nitrogen. Here also same thing, because you have nitrogen rich content in this thiourea precursor. You are observing variety of uh, doping modes for nitrogen in the cysteine ione. Because of the bulky nature of the molecule, you have only two states. Cysteine in between thiourea and uh, cysteine. Okay, decomposition is possible. Some sort of decomposition is possible. So you observe a slight deviation here. Okay, so cysteine, if you consider uh, the most uh, important feature is it always uh, substitute promotes dual doping. That is both at substitution and interstitial uh, uh, doping mode. In the case of cysteine, dual doping of nitrogen is absent as well as the interstitial. What you observe only is the substitutional sites. But in thiourea, all sorts of nitrogen doping can be uh, observed. The surface nitrogen, this NO, NO2, NH4+, plus, is uh, dominated with thiourea and cysteine in this case. Okay, because of the decomposition nature. Lastly, when you consider uh, sulfur doping modes, uh, again the thiourea it can facilitate both anionic doping and cationic doping. Cysteine, okay. you will never observe the formation of sulfate species that is a very important property that you observe whereas in the case of cysteine you observe only anionic doping and the sulfate formation in this case you don't observe the uh, cationic doping mode okay remember whenever you have a sulfate formation over the species expulsion of the other dopants from the host matrix is uh, less probable because sulfate serves as a shield for the escape of nitrogen or carbon every is well established in the literature okay the only thing why these things uh, is observed once again i am saying because it depends on their okay uh, 
decompose the nature of these precursor. Having said that, why we have such an inconsistency in the doping code? Okay, what makes uh, by using the same uh, preparation conditions and by using the same precursor, why we are observing so drastic conditions in the uh, doping world is because of these three reports. See, Park, uh, they report that the titanium alkoxides, when you consider, it facilitates the carbon doping in this uh, temperature range. Most of the reports that we in the tri-doper system, they also use titanium alkoxides. They use titanium alkoxides, titanium halides, or sometimes uh, titanium oxysulfates, titanium oxalate precursors, titanium uh, uh, nitrites. Okay, so depending on the precursor, the anion in this precursor can also facilitate some sort of doping, giving different doping modes. Herrera suggested that if the surface area of the crucible that we use for the calcination process are different, then doping process will be changed. Smaller area absorbs more heat, facilitating complete decomposition of the precursor, but the larger area of the crucible results in incomplete decomposition. We do not know how many types of crucibles are available uh, in the market, what are the area surface of the crucible that is taken by the individual researcher. Even if you observe any paper properly, they will never provide any details on the surface area of the crucible and the ramping rate of the furnace. This is the thing that leads to the such inconsistencies. It is impossible to unify the report. Yeah, you at all suggested that if you are doping in the amorphous matrix, uh, you, it results in effective doping, not in the crystallized forms. Okay. In uh, literature, sometimes they use uh, the amorphous, sometimes they use host anatase itself or host retail itself. We do not know what happens in the amorphous matrix and then you carry out the calcination temperature. Because of these three major uh, conflicts, okay, uh, whatever I have said so far, you observe uh, diverse doping modes. Okay, diverse. See, you observe why these doping modes are there is because of such things only. Okay, so. Uh, one has to be very careful in understanding the doping complications involved in this uh, tri-doper system. So what is the takeaway or the summary of my uh, talk is, even though you, we use a single precursor, uh, the, that is the versatile uh, part of this uh, system, you need not have to take separate precursor for carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur. You take only one precursor, you can uh, observe a tri-doper system. So, but the mutual interference among these carbon and nitrogen uh, sulfur, what is the exact interaction between the P orbitals of carbon nitrogen and the D orbitals of sulfur uh, is hardly known. Uh, the, even though I said it is a mutual doping, depending on the ionic radius, the depth, penetration depth will be different. So there will be a, uh, a preferential doping and other dopants will segregate on the surface. Uh, we do not know what sort of interaction takes place between the titanium precursor and the thiourea or cysteine or cysteine. Such understanding is essential to, uh, un uh, to, to have a thumb rule on the doping process. And when it is a tri dope, uh, because in the photocatalysis properties, we normally speak on optimum doping concentration. When you have a tri doping mode, we do not know how to optimize the doping level or which doping to be optimized. We are yet to arrive at the understanding the contribution of individual dopants in this, which uh, whether nitrogen narrows the band gap, sulfur band, uh, narrows the band gap, we don't know. But we are observing only the simultaneous effects. We still fail to understand the individual uh, dopant. Uh, are we stuck with these three precursors? Because you do not observe uh, many reports on this uh, carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur. We only uh, we are, we are only restricted to three precursors. Okay, why not these precursors that has a similar uh, uh, molecular structure? Just like instead of thiourea, replace one hydrogen by methyl, methyl thiourea, why not amido thiourea, diethyl thiourea, or these aromatic uh, compounds constituting carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur? But we have to try with uh, these precursors. My research group uh, is focusing on amido thiourea and methyl thiourea and thiourea. We are trying to arrive at the unique uh, differences between these three precursors. We are trying to establish that precursors also play an important role in the doping mode. Okay, so literature is open. Uh, the, anybody is interested to work on these things, it's a very good uh, uh, research work. So before you understand doping, uh, you know, there is uh, something called, we call it as A to Z doping, uh, A to Z process in the doping systems. Until you understand these things, 
uh, no, please do not uh, start any research work. You have to understand the fundamental aspects. For example, if for amorphous or anisotropy, band gap response, okay, likewise, uh, home group, or Halder Wagner methods, Hall mobility, Heineckers, Gillian model, Kogerwing, Kogerwing notation, one has to understand uh, to derive the de defects. Welcome on plot to understand the band gap response and uh, electronegativity uh, to know the position of the band edges, okay, and uh, nature of doping. Okay, or asphalt ripening, especially in uh, hydrothermal synthesis, these things come into picture. Polymorphic of phase transition. Few dopants really uh, initiates phase, phase transition and few stabilizes them. So why, why, what exactly is resp uh, responsible? We have to. Uh, one, somewhere we have to focus on the resistivity measurements. Milan Hall equation or Wolf constructions, uh, very important method. Zener pinning effects to understand the particle growth dynamics. Likewise, you know, we have A to Z uh, uh, parameters until we have a very broader picture on these a to z parameters for a particular host matrix and for a particular dopant you know you can uncover many uh, many exciting uh, process that is operating in this uh, doping uh, mechanism okay i mean uh, thanks for your attention any comments or uh, anything that you would like to express on my talk you please feel uh, free to email to me this uh, particular uh, id now uh, you are open you are open for questions and uh, thanks for your patience, uh, madam. Hello.